Konvanwa, Joe. Konvanwa. Yes, it certainly is going to be another exciting Japan League One rugby match. A lot of pressure on the Spears, Kubota Spears, of course, as you mentioned, defending champions, edging the Wild Knights in last year's last season's final. But they are under pressure to get the win. They're currently in sixth position with 26 points. Eagles in fifth at 29. And the Cabelco Steelers also in fourth on 29 points. So vital the Spears will have to work hard to get points here against the high flying Wild Knights before they keep on charging away, galloping away from the other contenders. And there they are on the right there, the Kubota Spears in orange. Lucas Petorius will be relishing his opportunity to play against Damien Dowlander and Dylan Riley. Such an exciting combination. I love the balance between Dowlander and Riley. Dowlander is so versatile, getting that gain, gain line go forward, but also the ability to send it wide. And you can see that the amount of tries being scored outside of Damien Dowlander by Dylan Riley on eight tries. Osada on seven tries, Yamasawa on three tries. So the ability to spread the world ball wide and give those guys on the outside the opportunity to score. Well, for the Saitama Wild Knights, Marika Corriabetti continues to make impacts from the bench. And that's by and large because of this man here, Tomoki Osada in electrifying form, Tinas. These guys are really on fire. You know, he's um, taken his opportunity you know, to think that he can keep such an accomplished international like Corio Betty on the bench. It just shows the willingness by this team to get him into space. And he's certainly taken his opportunity. Very dynamic, very fast, great skills on the outside. And if you get all that space being created by Dahlander, you know, that is the opportunity you need to really make yourself known and put your hand up for further selection into the Japan side. There's a make or break feel to proceedings this evening as far as the Kubota Spears in sixth position are concerned. Three points adrift of the Eagles and the Steelers who populate that last fourth playoff position but the tallest of tasks in front of them. Saitama Wild Knights running wild this year in the league. 67 tries. Played 10, won 10. But the last team to beat them were the Spears. It's tonight the night that they turn their season around. Kishioka kicks off long and into the hands. <laughs> Just popped over the top to uh, Lachlan Boschier, the new Plymouth man, who was making a real name for himself in New Zealand before heading over to these shores and his start continues to rise in the JRLO. Nice clearance, clean exit, job done for the Saitama Wild Knights. Yeah, very clean exit there by Kishioka. Well, they've gone through their restart play securely taken there and then the ball brought back Luriyaha just setting it up once good platform for Kishioka to clear from Helu at the back ball ring in the middle and it's the big South African who's found by the throw of the returning Dane Coles off the pop and into the midfield big man moving at pace one of them Koga Nezuka my last time out against the Yokohama Eagles in that thrilling finish again under the lights. Yamasaki mops up the mess in for Haruto Kira, whose try haunted the Wild Knights in that final at the very end. Interesting option, spotting some space. Oh, super casual from Tafuya Yamasawa and the casual nature sees the Spears attacking and almost back into the 22. Nice ball out to Yamasaki.
And all that hard work from that first restart undone. And you said very casual there by Yamasawa. Not sure what he was thinking there. And then his kick from behind his goal line goes straight into the midfield. It was curious, wasn't it, Tinas? <laughs> I thought that a whistle may have gone elsewhere as we have a look at Franz Ludeke, who is the Kubota Spears head coach. Been there since 2016. Great success in South Africa. A two-time Super Rugby winner with the Bulls. And, well, he was in the conversation for taking the reins of the Brave Blossoms before the inimitable Eddie Jones swoops back into his former role. And Yuhei Shimada. Just his third appearance of the season. Looking for the opening points of the evening. Which he does so with some simplicity and Kubota Spears rewarded for early pressure. Yeah, they'll be happy with that. Three points out of there. Franz Ludwig and his team. Robbie Deans won't. Surely a couple of strong messages would have been sent down. Clear your lines early. Gain some territory. Matsuda. He's already got well over 100 points to his name this season, but trailing behind Bryn Gatland in the top point scoring rankings. Wild Knights in transition. This is when they're most deadly. Matsuda drifts just to give himself that extra room before he gets tackled by Yamasaki. Big carry from Big Ludiaga. Him and Liam Mitchell. Making quite the combo in the engine room at the moment. Dylan Riley swoops round and gives it to Dialende in a spot of bother. Two-time World Cup winner dealing with the mess with a plum. Craig Miller. Matsuda. Well, he gets enveloped by orange jerseys. He had a lot of blue traffic around him as well. Wild Knights. Looking a little disconnected at the moment as Miller keeps it simple. Diaga tips it on to Valu. Mitchell spots a bit of room, frees up that big left paw. So adept at the one-handed offload, but on this occasion gets robbed. Kishioka spots some room. Cut off by the Wild Knights. Up she goes. First aerial assault of the evening and there's no pressure on the taker. And Shimada carries forward. Uh, all the energy with the spears at the moment. But the charge down, the cluster of bodies. It is frenetic, Zatinas. Breathless stuff here. A very impressive defensive set by Kubota that led to the turnover. Quick off the mark, not giving any space really for the Wild Knights to attack in. Miller, busy as ever. Huge passage of ball in play here. Taiki Koyama is featured in every match. Oh, finds, his, take. finds his box kick taken expertly by Kishioka. Well, the going is tough, as is the right shoulder of Atsushi Sakate, captaining this Wild Knight side with the richly experienced shot of Hori helping and guiding and supporting from the bench. And the two man hit versus one human always results in the one losing. It's really well resourced from the Wild Knights. Still, the ball in play. The fatigue setting into the handling. Yamasawa casual again. Yeah. 
And this one too. I don't think I've seen so many box kicks of nine in Japanese rugby. Not uh, the lesser spotted box kick when it comes to the JRLO. But this is lung busting. Still, the ball not out of place, still contestable in the air. Kishioka to the skies. And Yamasawa, cool headed as ever. Before he's enveloped by Orange again. Mitchell. Last for a couple of challenges. It's so impressive this season. Player of the season candidate. The Firebrand second row. I'm not sure what the world record is, Tinas, but this is this has got to be competing for the longest ever passage in play. And eventually it's drawn to a halt by a booming kick across the touchline. And we can all suck in a bit of much needed ox oxygen yeah get in that o2 yamasawa there deciding right enough is enough let's just reset and a bit of aerial ping pong but ultimately both defensive organization sets were very good from both teams over the top but spilt forwards from the fingertips of final tupa Gets himself into the side by virtue of that suspension for Makassi. Here come the Wild Knights. Fizzing ball, too hot to handle for Rosada. And if there's any man on the pitch in blue, you want the ball with in a situation like that. It is Asada. But he spills. Great, great little break there by Kuyama. And this is where that fatigue has set in. And you would expect Rosada here. That is a gift. Unfortunately, just taking his eyes off the ball at the last moment. He'll be bitterly disappointed. What an opportunity there he had. Yeah, League One Team of the Year last year on his debut season. Three appearances at the Rugby World Cup for Tomoki Osada. Arguably him and Haruto Kida. The star wingers of the entire league season last year. Well, Dane Coles, just back from injury. His lungs will be burning after this set. Well, it is a very welcome return for Dane Coles. There's still no Liam Williams, still no. Bernard Foley since round three. It is a blunted spear as far as Kubota are concerned in an attacking sense, but they do lead by three here at the Prince Chichibu. Wild Knights are beginning to find their rhythm. They're beginning to find some room. Takeyama spots the space and produces an exquisite 50 22. lovely kick here Likas Praturias coming off the blind side well that is spot on lovely kick kept his head down over the ball what a swing in fortunes now for the wild knights he's known for his lethal finishing takayama but that time seeing his surgical boot and now the wild knights pulling some sophisticated shapes together in the middle but too complex and the spears look to strike from deep oh liam mitchell the big second row working hard shapes of the kick bounces off the right get him on the sevens pitch Diaga, another mountainous man in this Wild Knights pack. Ooh, six foot eight and a half of him. The kick tennis resumes and resumes in full flow. Kishioka. Wearing that Bernard Foley jersey. 
But a sliced clearance means that's a win for Kubota, courtesy of Matsuda. Yeah, it's not often, or well, not really what we want to see in any games anywhere in the world, but it does has its moment in the game. Got to keep that patience. It's all about territory. Regaining possession, ultimately. Kubota Spears were a lot more patient. And they had the advantage. Suenaga, oh, it's beautifully worked and it did open up, didn't it? But again, inaccuracy. Letting the side down. Captain with the inside ball. The flying Yamasaki. They're creating play, they put a bit of variety on the attacking shape. Unfortunately, not able to find the final pass. Yamasaki, oh, it's his first competitive game of the season he was involved in the cross border loss to the Chiefs picked up two tries but maybe that telepathy missing at the moment but no such worries for the settled wild knights and the flying Takayama touchline almost acts as defender number 16 but Mitchell's there feeding Ludiaga Diolande pins his ears back the Springbok springing to life and the Wild Knights for the first try of the match. Oh, good heads up rugby there by Damien Dallander. Lovely little offload. That interplay there, Lure de Jager, that's the offload. Damien Dallander with the eyes up. And it's like a parting Red Sea. It just opens up. This is why he's such an accomplished international player still has the pace from an inside center to sprint away for 40 meters and score the try look there eyes up spots the gap accelerates through it what a finish tennis the more i see of damien dialende the more there is to love. What a wonderful centre. And 32 years old, there's still maybe even better years to come for him. Yeah, we'd still love to see him play in another World Cup, although I think that might be a little bit too far. But if he can manage and keep in shape, you know, Rossi Rasmus does like to keep an experience head in there. I think of the likes of Dwayne Vermeulen, Dion Fury, Skulk Brits in the previous World Cup. Just someone that's been there, done that, keep the calmness. But he is certainly an all rounded player. Well, Wild Knights feel they were taken in the air there, but Dane Coles isn't going to bat an eyelid. He carries forward as he looks to inject a bit of purpose into this Spears attack. Flipped over the top. Yamasaki drops on the toe. Yamasaki beaten by the touchline. On oh, the cruel bounce of the ball. Good idea there. First opportunity to get back on the attack. Unfortunately there, bounce of the ball beating him into touch. But the ease, the Spears found the space on the edge will be a little bit concerning for the Saitama Wild Knights. Nice and simple over the top to Ben Gunter. Bangkok born, Gunnard had raised. Well, that's not the greatest kick. And Spears will get another opportunity here. Yeah, no, they've certainly dominated the aerial battle apart from that lovely 50-22. The Spears have been in control of the kicking strategies and the kicking gains. Yeah. 
tank holes. He's had Erasmus deputising for him. Doing very nicely indeed, but Coles is a one-of-a-kind hooker. And Yamasaki is getting plenty of touches early in this match, but he finds himself surrendering a penalty to the jackaling jaws of Lachlan Boshir. Great hit there, and this is the opportunity that's been created there for Boshir. Good, nice low hit around the legs. Get your opponent down and that allows Boschia to get over that's his 13th turnover of the season it's so crucial defensively for a team for your players to read the correct time to turn it over just alleviate so much pressure and from the penalty the line out is taken crisply and Gunter carries through some heavy track here traffic Bosch here the other flanker lovely pace injected from Yamasawa oh sticky fingers from Osiela Ivalu nearly held on and he went bombing through that hole the big prop yeah good good recycling there by the Wild Knights at the tackle breakdown they were just folding around the corner and just beating the defensive fold every time unfortunately there for Valu I think he saw the glory anything you can do Damien I can do better <laughs> now, Matsuda will be much more pleased with that effort oh, good take Really stretching the receiver there, straight into the hands. Diaga, the aerial octopus, wins the tangle, and Dialende wins the tough meters, backpacking a few spears with him. Diaga, back on the ball. He has been imperious in blue since returning to rugby in Japan. Yamasawa, the dart through a few holes, but. Only tackle from Kubota. Swift hands, smart hands, deadly hands. Koki Takayama. Flying finish there by Koki Takayama in the corner. But look at these brilliant hands there. Quick hands, quick transfer. Those are the forwards playing like centers sending Takayama away in the corner lovely hand straight and quick transfer of the ball Sakate and then Cornelson and he has just one thing to do and that's dart to the corner and dive over great work there by Wild Knight setting it all up it's getting over that gain line every time when they carry and then a the quick recycle Takayama in the corner. Rakia Matsura, who for the fourth successive season has accrued over a hundred points in the JRLO. Deadly from the tee. He's got his number one fan sat right behind him by the looks of things. But on this occasion, unable to give the people what they want. But Koki oh, Takayama re-imprints his lethal reputation, his 31st try in 42 Wild Night appearances. Moki Kishioka picks out Mitchell, who this time claims it safely. Pressure comes from the spears as the long ball finds Long Lude. 
no roll from the Spears, so penalty advantage for the Wild Knights. You look to mix things up against the grain. But they'll take the penalty instead. Yeah, and Franz Ludiger will be having a word with his players here. They're already under pressure with those two tries and now giving unnecessary penalties away. You've got to stick with that discipline. Roll away from the tackle. Do your utmost not to give the Wild Knights any opportunity to get out of their half. Tinas, Franz Ludica, what, what kind of coach is he? Well, he's very strong on his structures of play. He really gets that in and imprinted into his team. He does stay calm. He's one of those coaches that's got a level head, stays calm. He will always look at the analytical parts rather than play too much on the emotion. And he will send those messages through. Stay disciplined, roll away, control the things that you can control. Malikas Pretorius profiting from something you don't see every day. That was Yamasaki stripping the ball from Dialende in the contact. Dane Coles transfers that ball into his own grip and Ballbrink then gets fouled. Just this swarm of blue jerseys not allowing the Spears to breathe. Kishioka drops one on his opposite number for Yamasawa, pumps it down the throat. Oh, oh, oh pin perfect. Small margins and he found that last bit of blade of grass before the chalk line. And again, such accurate and effective kicking by the Kubota Spears. And this is now where that discipline has got to step up. Keep the Wild Knights under pressure down in their own territory. Tialande <laughs> with a bee in his bonnet. Punishes Yamasaki for that theft in the last contact by just using him as a speed bump on that carry. Shimada does very well. Under immense pressure there. His third appearance of the season. Goal, oh, so silky for a forward. Just changed the way you looked at hookers when he burst onto the scene and still the skills. As Yamasawa gets all wrapped up by the big orange tentacles of the Spears. But it will be a, should be a scrum to the Wild Knights. It should be. Yeah, they were correct, Joe, there, because he was taken as soon as he landed. He wasn't given any opportunity to play, so that's a little bit different from when you go into a tackle, when you carry the ball into a tackle and you're held up. If you jump and contest for the ball and immediately held up, and it creates more, your team still keep the position when it becomes unplayable. One of those little nuances of the game. Yeah, it's, it's one of those you don't see so often. That's why I found myself questioning a little bit. And I think by the, the face of Lapis Laboshadnik, I think that he'd forgotten the, the law temporarily as well. So the Wild Knights, 15 minutes to play of this first half. They're in control. And they are deploying Dialande with regularity. Matsuda tries to free up a bit of space. He can only bomb it into the shins of the defensive line in front of him. Back to the penalty, but Matsuda doesn't look entirely settled. He doesn't look his usual composed self right now. There's a couple of uh, unforced errors. Just a little bit under pressure. He will need to find his rhythm and his calmness. But if you have someone like Damien Darland on the outside, you can just pop the ball to you know and trust that he can settle it all up. That's the key statistic there. Four penalties already conceded by the Kubota Spears, only one by the Wild Knights. And more importantly, it's the position on the field where they've conceded these penalties. It's always been deep in Wild Knight territory and allowing them to get out and reapply pressure. Diaga, towering high again. 
Bosia. Matsuda switches play. No look for O'Reilly. He goes weaving through the orange jerseys. Outstanding steal though. How did he see that one? Oh, Tupa, who is that standing up there? The big man, Kaishi. How did he get there? Up on his feet, turned over ball. But referee Hiratawa deciding there's something else that happened there, Joe, not quite sure. Lovely play there by Matsuda, changing the direction. Inside ball around the body. Dylan Riley coming off his centre, changing the angle of attack. Yes, it does look like he didn't quite release Riley on the effort down to the floor. Well, we've enjoyed the backs, but now it's time for a bit of shunt and grunt from the big boys up front. Oh, 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 wily old fox, Taiki Koyama, give him an inch and he'll take a try. And the Saitama Wild Knights hammer home their advantage here through the wily scrum half, Taiki Koyama. Good effect of driving more there, ball to the back. They stay tight, although the Spears do well. And that little moment of hesitation. Drawing Sui Naga a little bit wider off the ruck. That space inside if the mall not being filled. And that's all Koyama needed to thread through and score his fourth try of the season. The J you feel for the Spears. Those penalty counts are starting to rise, and that's the opportunity that's being created. And any sort of slight opportunity for the Wild Knights, they will take it. Matsuda from very similar position to the one that he pulled to the left. Learns his lessons, recalibrates, and stretches this Wild Knights lead by another pair of points. And you feel after almost 30 minutes of play, this is going to become a long night for Dane Coles and his Spears Chargers. Now Mitchell, bar the burglary from one kickoff, doesn't look like he's going to drop one all night. One of the things that really stands out about this Wild Knight side is the dynamism of their two second rows. The hulking frames of the Yager and Mitchell, so busy, so destructive. Ooh, Yamasawa just dipped his head like he may have been caught by a boot. He's fine and he chases and Kishioka looks for the 50-22. Finds his adversary. He says, enough's enough. Sends it into the crowd. With just under 10 minutes left of this first half. Wild Knights in real control and that's the head-to-head -head between these two tens. And you can see there, Kishioka kicking, opting to kick slightly more. But they are winning the kicking duel, the kicking battle. The Spears, although they haven't been able to capitalize on it. Mitchell, so good, finding Miller. Oh, then Gunter, 
who isn't held, so he gets up and goes for another blast. He goes for an explosive blast all the way to the 22. Matsuda opts to head back into the heavy traffic, takes a lick of paint off himself and recycles and gunters all grunt. Valu, Riley, Yamasawa, final ball not there for Rosada. Yeah, Yamasawa, you got to pick up your hand there, son. That wasn't a good pass there. No look, just a flick of the wrist. And poor old Tomoki Osada, once again denied an attacking opportunity. Already three tries scored, open game, and he's be, he'll be very frustrated that his opportunities have not come. Coles really stretches David Balbring. Great kick, Asada. He wants ball in play. He wants a pass back from Yamasawa. And instead, the fullback dances into contact. Koyama, been really good this half. Bosch here. The soft skills of the biggest men in blue really are something to marvel. The captain, Sakate. Miller to Mitchell. Matsuda in a hurry to get it to the edge. Yamasawa, Yamasawa. Side down, just short of the 22. Koyama, good handling, but picked off by Heilu. And the offloading by the Wild Knights, just a little bit too frantic. Lovely outside attack there into that space. Rikus Pretorius with the last cast tackle, stopping Yamasawa. And then Damien the Islander keep the pace of the game up and the continuity but the offload goes out of hand and it drops forward good read there by Rikus Pretorius to get over and lovely ball out wide for Yamasawa to run onto exactly what you need from your fullback on a, a counter-attack running onto the ball with pace and unfortunately that broke down but overall, a little bit disappointing after that Ben Gunter break. Wild Knots not able to capitalize on that play that set up. Fujiwara gets it in, gets traveling, and frees up the back. slow ball and the forwards aren't where Fujiwara wants them so he takes, tells them to take a few steps back Kishioka in the pocket and Spears persist with their kicking strategy well, the touch found but no real meterage made and no real penetration in the attack from the Spears. Do you feel us that they need to chance their arm a little bit more here? Yeah, you're trailing so far. Yes, you need to play that territorial game. But you've got to ensure that you, when you do carry, you go over that gain line and be a little bit more patient. Wild Knights are beginning to find their groove meanwhile and they may just have found another 50-22. Question as to whether it was brought back into their half from the line out. Lovely kick there from Takayama coming around the corner off his wing. Of course he'll be on the short side wing there and had to move around to get to that ball. Is a 50-22. Wild Knights retaining the ball. Go, 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 go. 
concerning there, but Damien Dallin, it looks like he's fine to continue the game. chance for a bonus before the break for the Wild Knights. They miss their man uncharacteristically. First set piece error from Sakate. Great pressure. Kishioka who picks out Osada. He runs like a man starved of ball. Cut in half by Dane Coles and Co. Ball ring. Matsuda spots some room, links up with Riley, a peach of a score and a bonus to boot before half time for the rampant Wild Knights. Yeah, that was inevitable. Dylan Riley has to get on the scoreboard. What a perfectly weighted kid runs onto it he doesn't need it need to break stride there good call there by Matsuda straight onto it and the try scoring continues for the Wild Knights that is his ninth try of the season and this time assisted by Matsuda Lovely little kick pass there over the Spears defensive line. And what a well balanced team. They can score in any way. They can set it up with a driving maul. They can counter attack. They can play out a face play. Well balanced in terms of their attacking skills. dab on his left foot following up and there's the first pump yeah I've done that that's mine <laughs> a moment of a joy and uh, a moment that we're getting pretty used to seeing Dylan Riley crossing the paint try number nine the most he's ever scored is 12 in a season and he is hunting that down at great pace former Australia under 20 but now brave blossom as far as kickoff returns and exits are concerned I'll do very nicely for the Wild Knights yeah, another easy out here for the Wild Knights and now they can retain ball two from this line out penalty there and the Kubota Spears at the breakdown last play of the half well nights say enough's enough let's head to the sheds it's a job well done it's a bonus point in the bag. And it is a lead of 26-3 at the break against the reigning champions, the Kubota Spears.
Big match-up and a repeat of last year's final of the JRLO between the Kubota Spears and the Wild Knights who are undefeated. And they have the unparalleled man that is Damien Diolande at inside centre. He got the scoring going for the team who played 10 and won 10 heading into this crunch clash. A bit of a revenge match-up after the Spears pipped the Wild Knights to the trophy last season. And while the Spears started brightly, it was the Wild Knights who grew into the game. Slick hands, Fed Takayama. And Koki got it done in precise fashion. Forwards and backs working in real unison and at this stage. The sheen of a bright Kubota Spear start was beginning to dim. Taiki Koyama has driven the tempo outstandingly. He's made all the right decisions for the Wild Knights. And on this occasion, instead of orchestrating the big men around him, he took the reins himself and dove across for try number three. Again, the big men made the busts through the middle and it set up the breakdown and the platform for a bit of Matsuda magic and Dylan Riley in for his customary score half time here at the Prince Chichibu Memorial Ground it is the Kubota Spears 3 Saitama Wild Knights 26 
Welcome back to the Prince Chichibu Memorial Grounds here the home of the Kubota Spears for this evening's match against the Saitama Wild Knights and it was one that promised an awful lot for the home side victorious in their greatest ever moment in the JRLO when they clinched the crown last season but they have come up against the supercharged Saitama Wild Knights who don't look like they'll be relinquishing their undefeated record here this evening. They lead 26 points to three. And as far as the Battle of the Tents go, Tina Dalport, it's Rakia Matsuda's night thus far. Absolutely, Joe. Matsuda has been very instrumental, especially with that little touch of magic to set up the Dylan Riley trial. Try. Kishioka, on the other hand, has not been able to get his team going forward. The game meters is so heavily favored into the Wild Knights. It's not even comparable. And that is the one area the Spears will have to work on. They've been able to get some territorial advantage, but have not been able to capitalize it at all. And they, through that man, Captain Tatekawa will have to keep the ball in hand and start putting the Wild Knights defensive line under pressure and hopefully work their way to the edges. But they have certainly been outcarried and outscored in this first half. Craig Miller enjoying a decent run of games at the moment. I bring an awful lot of dynamism. He's been good as well. And Gunter back for the first time since round one. Matsuda sends the Wild Knights in pursuit of the Spears and Final Tupa. The Spears need a spark. Their attacking edge, dulled by the absence of Foley and Williams and Hida. But they need their other men in orange to step up this evening if they're to turn this around. It's a crucial stage of the Japan Rugby League One season. The Wild Knights are cruising to the playoffs, most likely as seed number one, but the fourth and final berth still hangs in the balance. Cross field from Matsuda. Oh, airborne collision. Fortunately, Engata emerges unscathed. Lovely soft hands and Final Tupa has come alive in the opening moments. Heavy hit on Kitagawa. Ishioka might get a bit of good fortune off the ricochet, but Damien Diolande hasn't just got power. He's got height as well. And he's got a penalty. Yeah, fortunately for the Spears, Suenaga, they're getting penalised. Hands on the floor, past the ball when he tried to steal it. And this is a crucial part of their game that's been costing them. Wild Knights again with the opportunity to get away from pressure, get away from their territory. And most importantly, regain possession. Now, Taki Fuji is onto the field, the former Japan 20s player uncapped for the brave blossoms and yet to score a try in his professional career maybe tonight's the night the wild knights seem in the mood and errors like that from kishioka will only feed that ambition and belief that they could run up a mighty score here yamasawa snaking hips slaloming through the spears and striking early in this second half. And that comes from the error. Kishioka not unable to deal with the ball straight into Riley's hand. He sets it up. Quick recycle. And that's an easy glide in. Lovely heads up rugby. He runs onto the ball there. Good work there by Koyama again around the ruck. Both the Spears defensive line and disarray. 
Easy glide. I don't even think he broke a sweat. He didn't even have to get out of third gear. Unfortunately for Kishioka and his Kubota Spears, you have to maintain that ball lost in the catch, in the attempted catch. And this is the danger of the Wild Knights. They will punish you for any misdemeanor. Matsuda, from a position he's rather familiar with this evening, at the Prince Chichibu. And he engages a bit of muscle memory to find the line across the crossbar. He maximizes the Yamasawa try. And the Wild Knights lead the Spears 33 points to three. Messi in the air and Messi to the tune of a knock-on from the Spears nothing going the way of these men in orange and I have to ask you Tinas we've watched a lot of the Wild Knights we've seen them up against some of the best in the business in this league who's going to stop them good question Joe yes they've certainly been so dominant in this campaign brave lupus didn't offer that much of a position. They will be looking in second position to keep the pressure on the Wild Knights. Sam Goliath was probably the closest of the games. And it's when they took the game to the Wild Knights, put them under pressure by carrying the ball, holding possession, that there were some gaps opening up. That's something Kubota Spears have been unable to do tonight. The ball pumps long and Spears once again happy to engage in the aerial battle. Okay. And it's one that the Wild Knights are happy to seek touch with. Yeah, that is a very good clearance there by Matsuda from his 22, finding the opposition 10 meter line. in the first half where they couldn't really get the distance on their kicks that was a fantastic clearance but it gives Kubota the opportunity to launch an attack Dan Coles will be desperate to find his jumpers and get some game going well the DJ here is doing the best he can to perk up the home crowd who at the moment are watching their side be bested in quite big fashion by the Wild Knights a little moments like that might breathe a bit of life into the support as well. Well, won by Nezuka and Coles was on hand and off go the Spears. Bit of zip in the passes and some bounce in the balls of the feet. Shimada brought to the floor. Tupa is the opening to this half. Once again, Kishioka putting up the Gary Owen. Purely, and this could be a chance for Yamasawa and Co to counter. Nice length on the ball, gets swallowed up the second he catches it and driven backwards. There's Suenaga deployed at eight this evening, so often in the seven jersey, but ever missed a dependable for the Spears. Uwe Helu, a barbarian last summer. That is just a mindless kick away. You're 30 points behind under pressure. You have to s decide to throw caution into the wind and really start carrying the ball. Marikas well, Pretorius is often the man to do so, but there is no chink in this Wild Knight armour at the moment. No, there is just no way through at all. Kubota Spears are doing is kicking it back to the midfield and allowing the Wild Knights to return and attack against them again. 
They'll be hoping the defense will make an impact, but they have to start carrying the ball. You're already 30 points behind. You've got to start risking a little bit, go off script a little bit just to try and get that break. Changes run for the Kubota Spears, J.D. Shikering. Another big born South African wearing 19 on for the Kubota Spears. And a shot of Kejiro Tamefusa wearing 18 in orange on for his JRLO debut. There's Craig Miller departing the action, replaced by Danny Perez. Another good showing from the dynamic loose head from Dunedin. And another good showing typically from Damien Diolande. Liam Mitchell, dynamic as ever. Oh, fizzed ball across the face, beautiful to watch. Takayama gobbling it up. And then a few meters, Diaga. Riley, so comfortable. Diaga, he gets through a mountain of work. Takayama's looking for a bit of a shift himself. Inside ball from Yamasawa. Doesn't find the pause of his own players and then Riley spills forward. Yeah, not for the first time. The ball gets spilled by the Wild Knights in the offload. But they are willing to play and the key difference really between the two teams is how quickly the ball gets recycled. Koyama for the Wild Knights as soon as the ball is there and presented, the ball's away. Fujiwara slows the ball down. Unfortunately, the delivery is not as quick. Allows the Wild Knights the opportunity to get their defensive press set. It slows everything down. And then the only option will be the kick. And they have to speed up that recycling. At the tackle and the breakdown to stand any chance to break into this 30 point lead by the Wild Knights. that Danny Perez change 100 kilos third appearance of the season Taiki Koyama has been in every game sees Cornelson drive from the base feed the man Mountain Dame in the Alande who skates across for his second Wild Knights running wild here at the Prince Chichibu Memorial. Oh, great pickup by Cornelson. How quick was that delivery? Stable scrum, quick channel one ball. And he's off before any of the Kubota Spears loose forwards can even recognize. And is any good 12 from that set play? You have to run off your shoulder of your eight. Good line by Damien Dahl and then too much pace and power. I sense another potential player of the match baseball cap heading the way of the Dialende household. But the TMO has piped up in the ear of our referee this evening and Gonna take a look at something. Oh, is there a little bit of a knock on there? He changes his bind, gets into that channel. Is that a clear take? I think, I think that's not so. And that is coming back for the knock on. No try. Unfortunate there for Damien Dahl and then Cornelson. 
Jack Nelson fumbling, unfortunately. Couldn't take that ball cleanly on the first attempt. Well, a great shame to see such a what lovely try chalked off, but justice served. And one more shot to see Shota, the great Shota Hori. He will retire at the end of this season with 76 caps in the Japan jersey, four B World Cups. And he and all the Wild Knights will be willing to send him off with a title. Brilliant read out at the back from Koyama. Tiagas everywhere. Such a nuisance. Then the breakdown work and then De Yaga with another blast off the ball. The, the biggest man and the smallest man working in tandem. The combo you didn't know you needed, De Yaga and Koyama. Oh, and that's why this game is a game for Great read there by Koyama. He's been very good today. Speeding up. The delivery at the breakdown. Lovely try. And likewise, Lurdiach, his work rate has been exceptional. Great to see him back on the pitch after his injury. And they are in flying form, the Saitama Wild Knights. He's not been bad either. Takuya Yamasawa, just his fifth appearance actually, having, having missed a chunk of the season between rounds five and ten, but he's back and he's found his sea legs pretty swiftly. Wonderful talent at full back. The Japan international, Shotohori. Ever distinctive by the locks, by the shorts, and by the way. He just menaces into contact. Diaga launches his frame into more bodies. Mitchell, his wingman in the row. Diolande denied a second, but hunting for more tries. Gunter. Gunter looks bigger than anyone on that field. Takes nearly four men to stop him. Matsuda to the boot. But it's well watched, well taken by Tatakawa. And another penalty under pressure, given away by the Kubota Spears. David Bullbring there. Playing Koyama at the base. Coming from an offside position. Oh, an interesting call here by. Shota Hori and the Wild Knights. They've already got the bonus point in terms of tries. And now they're opting to go for the given three points. Well, the bonus point was clinched long ago for the half-time blast. And this three points, you feel rather just to demoralize their opposition to the tune of three more, which Matsuda does. And the Saitama Wild Knights lead the Kubota Spears 36 points to three. More new personnel injected in orange. Hayate Era, who only made his debut a couple of weeks ago against the Fur Blitz. He marked it with a try. He packed it up with another one last week. Making a name for himself. And this guy doesn't need to make a name for himself. This guy's a superstar.
Marika Correa Betty. The Wallaby finishing great. Joined by Mark Abbott, who uh, replaces a man who shows great respect. And I think we can all bow in respect for his efforts out there tonight. Luther Yaga departing the field. Ben Gunter back with a bang. Ben Gunter rampaging down the right. Blue bodies in the way. Room out wide. Dylan Riley looks to go through the middle. The chicken wing offload and the hamstring stretcher from Lockie Boshier. But then the nudge forward. Oh, 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 the Wild Knights were purring. Ben Gunter, barnstorming run there on the edge. On the right hand touchline. Taking on all defenders. He's been very good. Good to see him back after his last game in last in round one. But he's certainly made a big, big difference. And if you look at those forwards, they do possess Ludiach and Liam Mitchell. Big units, both well over and touching 120 kilograms. You throw in a Jack Paul Nelson and a Ben Gunter. That is one formidable pack. And his night is done. Very impressive display back by Ben Gunter. It's a big bench that has been brought by the Kubota Spears this evening. Roland Botha, six foot eight and a half inches, coming off the bench to replace David Bullbrink. And maybe the last action of Ben Gunter's evening as well, which is a, it's a shame for us. We were enjoying the show, but first minutes back, you can imagine those lungs stretched to capacity. Itsuki Onishi in his sixth season with the Wild Knights onto the field in his seventh appearance of the season. And the Wild Knights pack retreating after a penalty awarded. And that's the first bit of dominance for the Kubota Spears after 55 minutes. But you have to kick it out from a penalty. And definitely don't kick it to him, Marika Coriabetti getting a run of steam. Matsuda spotting a bit of room again and Diolandi envelops his opposite man. Fujiwara doing the sweeping there and getting a big bosh from the Springbok for his troubles. But it's contestable and it's won by the Spears. Spun out by Ella. Bit of fluency and a bit of big fish from Bota, who tips it on to Tamefusa. First real life seen from the Spears, a dribble off the toe, a race for the line, but the touchline beats them all. Good charging run there by Ruan Puerta. First time they really carry the ball at pace, quick recycle, bust through the offload. I wondered if Datakawa should rather have kept the ball in hand. He had a 4 3 overlap, decided to go to the floor with a little kick. Luckily for him, the Wild Knights have taken the ball out. But after almost 60 minutes of play, the spear supporters have something to shout about. Bota back into the fray, claiming it in the skies. The spears charging forward, but they lose their footing. Big carry offered up by Sioni Tiopo. Oh, 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 wow. What doesn't he do, Damien Diolande? Superstar, indeed, superstar. Tatakawa there, in desperation to keep the hold of the ball and possession for his team, going off his feet to seal the ball off. And once again, the Wild Knights have led off 
Be a penalty given away by the Kubota Spears. Oh, there by Riley taking in. You can see there Tatakawa in his attempt to drive Teopa forwards. He went off his feet and sealed off the ball. Mitchell steals it. Diolande fizzes it. Boshier breaks it. Boshier's got Riley on the shoulder. One pass will do it to killer Dylan Riley. Just too much pace in this Wild Knights outfit. And that's something Franz Ludwig will have to look at his midfield. It all starts, of course, at source. Good take off the front. Lovely ball there by De Allende. And Tatakawa being beaten by Poshia. And then it's just too much pace by Dylan Riley. Tatakawa there, too slow to react. And a lovely little pass here by De Allende. Poshia there drifting to the outside on the out angle before he gets the ball runs into the hole and all Dylan Riley has to do is accept the pass and run it in. Very disappointing defence there by the Kubota Spears. Into double figures for Dylan Riley, the 26 year old. Matsuda's done that many times before but Dylan Riley, such a nose for the line. And if this Wild Knight side are to go through this season undefeated, if they are to hoist the silverware, well, if you can argue that they are the best in the business, there is a harmony, a fluency to the way they play. And it is just a delight to watch. Abbott, not a bad bloke to bring on when Lude lays low. But his carry yields a penalty. A lot of fresh faces on now. Good work there by Ayate Era. To affect that turnover penalty. Short levers, short and stocky. Difficult to move once he gets over the ball. Low center of gravity. Now, a big part of his game, how accurate is he throwing? Can he find his jumper? Schickeling, Ruan Puerta. Right to the tail, to Lapis. Transfer around the corner, and then the Wild Knights pour in. The long tentacles of Liam Mitchell come coursing through to try and disrupt. It's wrestled to the ground, but the referee's arm is out and wide. Penalty advantage to the Spears. Spilt forward. Side entry. Wild Knights number four, Liam Mitchell, coming in from the side to try and illegally stop that driving ball. He's an opportunity here for the Spears. Liam Mitchell, yet to be capped internationally, so in contention to become eligible for Japan, he's going to be drawn into the melee once again as. Ayate Era slots himself into the chariot and whips the orange horses ahead of him, gets a bit more ballast from the backs. The call to use it comes. Off goes Fujiwara. Space offered up out wide. Kick pass to finish. It's glorious from the Spears. Razor red shit. Spears. Hiroyuki Yamasaki. 
finishing a beautifully worked score carved out by the boot of Tomoki Kishioka. And finally finding a sharp edge to the attack. Lovely little weighted kick pass again from this angle. It looks like it all opened up for Kishioka. Come on, where's the gas? Put the foot on. But so many cross defenders coming over. Good option there. Get out wide to your speedster. Yamasaki. First league start. And he gets a try. And finally, the Kubota Spears are rewarded with the try. The accuracy especially at the breakdown and the tackle has certainly been lacking tonight all those penalties unfortunately it's only the five points just the five points but it is a try to Kubota Spears who showed their class for the very first time really in attack this evening Kishioka with the assist. His adversary Matsuda is sat there thinking it's a job well done on the bench and well he really is quite a complete player in that 10 jersey. He's been replaced by Kiyohi Yamasawa so two Yamasawas in blue on the field for the Wild Knights at the moment. You would think that Takuya will be slotting in there, moving from 15 to fly half. The chance for Robbie Deans to explore a few different combinations as this one is all wrapped up as it stands. Yeah, and the one thing that's really shone out by the Wild Knights is their consistency and selection. They haven't made a lot of changes. They've kept working on a established side. And now the opportunity to give a couple of guys an opportunity to play. Yamasawa. Oh, ho, ho, almost drops a gift into the breadbasket of Kishioka. He was capable of a bit of magic. We saw it in the last gas victory that they sealed against Yokohama Eagles last round. It was a chip over the top and a collection and some footwork that created the opportunity for the late Nozuka winner but we just haven't seen him dip into that box of tricks this evening no very much on the back foot tonight his only kicking options really has been to find territory and to be truthfully honest they weren't very effective not very accurate giving away position If you want to compete against this Wild Knight side, you've got to take the game to them through carrying balls, through big runners, through having the offloads. We saw from that Ruan Buerta charge that they can be cut open, but not enough of that tonight. Yeah. I don't think you're going to out kick them strategically because they've got so many weapons in the backfield and if they don't collect the kick then Dylan Riley or Damien Dialandi are likely to be on call so as you said Tinas you've got to take the game to them and Kubota take play deep into their half late in the game beyond the 10 meter line lovely platform to launch here And slight positives, they are sl slowly starting to get the measure up front over this Wild Knight team. All the substitutes that's come on, they've made a difference. Another scrum victory for them, that leads into a penalty. Set up a couple of good driving balls to set up that try. So slowly working their way back into this game. And just as I say that, Unfortunately for error, not able to find Ruan Puerto with a straight throw. And again, all momentum lost. Taiki Koyama, 
who has really caught the eye at scrum half has departed for the wild night so the vastly experienced Kesuke Uchida has the ball in his hands now the Kyoto born scrum half who rather uniquely for players of Japanese descent spent a bit of time playing for Tasman over in New Zealand so while we're so accustomed to New Zealanders coming to, over to Japan to forge their careers Uchida seeking experience in the other direction and the mark of the strength and depth of this Wild Knights outfit He's not going to get an opportunity to put it in again because there's some uh, real shenanigans going on there in the scrum. Yeah, there, Tame Fusa again getting the better of Daniel Perez. Angling in. Once the pressure got applied. That man could be key. Come the playoff shakedown, could Takuya Yamasawa. Such a well-rounded fullback. Attacks with so much confidence as well. It's the turn of the big boys to put in a shift here defensively. We've seen what the Wild Knights can do in attack, both forwards and backs, but now they've got the swirling orange storm beating a path to the line and they won't be stopped. Kubota Spears have a second. Yeah, and that is that slow forward, forward dominance they're starting to get. Right, uh, J.D. Sickling there, the pillars that's keeping up the driving mall. They stay nice and tight. They bound. It's an easy armchair ride in the back there. Just down all the big forwards doing all the hard work. Another well deserved try, and certainly look about the Spears. The last 10 minutes since they've made all the substitutions are winning that forward battle and creating the opportunities so that Era can get it another try so is that three tries in three matches now for Hayatiera it is indeed and maximized by the boot of Shimada this young kid must think professional rugby's dead easy three games three tries and truly making a mark the young 22 year old who's burrowed his way across for another JRLA uh, JRLO try having graduated from the great Take Your University the breeding ground for so many of our players in this league he didn't come from Teuko University but he's certainly adding a lot of value the South African Australian origin centre Ray Blossom out at the World Cup for Japan. Yes, Try scorer error. Finds both up. And the Spears have got a bit of pep in their step all of a sudden. Out to the edge they go. Osada. Who really another bee in his bonnet having not been fed the ball all night Diolande shows a turn of pace as he pursues his kick and Kishioka's there Kishioka's cool <laughs> and the Spears clear the decks 
here the next day by Vailea. They are showing a little bit of industry there. Unfortunately, that little grubber through didn't go back to hand. They are showing very late in this match that they can play, although a little bit too late to try and really contest against the Wild Knights. Riley, full of running on a hat trick. Back inside, unlocking the defence. There's a new Yamasawa on the field, but he's doing the same as the one that went before. Piercing the Spears defence, scything to the line. And the two Yamasawas combine that inside ball. Opens up no defenders in sight. Too late to fit into that hole. Left by the drifting defenders. And the variety of play by this Wild Knights are very impressive. They're so confident in all different ways of attack. And makes it look so easy to score tries against this Kubota Spears. And if he converts this, it will be another 50 pointer by the Wild Knights. Saitama's extraordinary point scoring run continues. They came into this match with a points difference of positive 303. The next closest is 173 points away. So that's Tokyo Suntory Sun Goliath. Well, there's even more daylight now as a 35 point margin is opened up with four and a half minutes to play and still maybe a bit of destruction from Damien. Yamasawa zipping it about, freeing up men around him on Ishii. Yamasawa to Yamasawa. Yamasawa at the double. Where is the defense, you would ask? The answer to that is it has been run over by Damien de Allende. Kujiwara not able to stand up. Lovely ball out wide from that quick ball on Nishi with a great run and that recycle it's so quick Yamasawa coming off fullback to play number nine standing number nine lovely feet there look at how he manipulates the contact and uh, such a quick recycle gives the Spears no chance to get any defenders back but all started by Damien de Allende running through brick walls. Oohs and ahs, but no extras to add. But there is plenty of points on that board if you are of a Wild Knights persuasion into the final minutes of the match. The Yamasawas running right at the moment. Oh, Liam Mitchell. He's been almost unfallible up front, taking those restarts. This time, the kick over the top snuffed out by Kishioka and Shimada arrives on his shoulder. Big hit coming off from Onishi. Drifted over the top, 
into the arms of Yamasawa. Masada, who mops up the mess, must be wondering what he's got to do to get in on the try scoring act. Uchida looks right. Hori buffeted back but frees up the offload. Luchida asks for the lesser spotted Japanese strain of Caterpillar. Crossfield kick is a gift. But it's spilt forward by Sioni Tiapa. Yeah, maybe that is reason enough not to set up another Caterpillar drive. Joe, we don't want to see that creeping into the fast pace. Japan League one rugby. Very impressive this season. The pace of the game, the intensity it's been played in. It's really encouraged to raise the tempo of the game. It's always quick throw ins, quick taps. They don't waste time at line outs or scrums. And from a spectator's point of view, a joy to watch. There's no doubt about it, the Japan Rugby League One is a wonderfully breathless brand of rugby to enjoy. And there's a bit of brutality in that scrum and that power game from the bench as well. The big boys who've been brought on are certainly going to have something to say in selection next week. Chest pumping from error, Kamimori, Tamifusa. That's the only positive, really, that Kubota Spears can take from this match is the changes they've made. Tamefusa, Era, Tamimori, Juan Puerta came on, adding a lot of bulk, shikiling the same. But they've had the better out of the Wild Knights forward pack for the last 15 minutes, 20 minutes or so. Is there one last drive? Is there one last strike for these Spears? They win a penalty. The ball is in the hands of their fly half. To the corner he'll go. One last opportunity. Very effective in that setting up of that driving ball. Wild Knights player going to ground, trying to bring it down. Get penalised for it. This for Prosperity. As no bonus point is on offer, he may be first to the bounce of the ball. And a calamitous and confusing end to the match with the most rugged line out you'll ever see. But Asipeli Moala, with the wits, with the desire, and with a try to close the match. And that a bit of sheen on an otherwise disappointing Spears night under the lights. Yeah, there's one touch there by Yamasawa that won't be on the highlights reel. Great work there by Cornelson to go up and contest the ball. A little bit of failed football skills and allows Moala to dot the ball down and get a last bit of points here for the Kubota Spears to finish on a high. Wonderful conversion over immense pressure from the Wild Knights who still weren't surrendering their scoreboard. But the deed was done long ago. 
and this unstoppable force known as the Saitama Wild Knights have triumphed once again. They've wreaked revenge for the final last year and defeated the reigning champions on home soil. Final score, Kubota Spears 22, Saitama Wild Knights 55. Ominous signs for the journey ahead for everybody else in this league. The Wild Knights, they're not taking their foot off their pace. They're getting better and better. Yes, Joe. They are looking very, very dangerous, very accomplished. Their combinations are working. they working together. They're anticipating plays. It's great to see little touches by Matsuda onto Dylan Riley, they are so confident. They vary the way they play. It's all different tries they scored from different sources. They can take it up front, they can spread it out wide from turnovers. And they are looking very favorite to take this league, but there are still quite a few hurdles in front of them. The Kubota Spears have shown in the last 15, 20 minutes or so. If you put pressure on them, especially up front, they may falter. But this man, Dylan Riley, player of the match, two tries again today. Very well balanced, so fast. As an outside center, taking his opportunities. That combination with Damien de Allender must be the da most dangerous centre combination in Japan Rugby League One this season. A few complaints for the player of the match here this evening in this JRLO uh, JRL clash. Dylan Riley bagging a brace and playing his part in another triumphant night for the Wild Knights who continue to march on to the playoffs undefeated. <laughs>